The War of 1812. August 1813. The War Thus Far. In late July, after their failure to take Fort Meigs, please uh, see my July 1813 video, a British and native force under Henry Proctor sailed east to attack an American supply depot guarded by Fort Stevenson on Ohio's Sandusky River. William Henry Harrison, commander of the Army of the Northwest, believes Proctor's force to be larger than it is in reality and orders Major George Krogan, in command at Fort Stevenson, to destroy the fort and retreat. But Krogan convinces Harrison to let him stand and fight. Krogan has 160 men. 160. Proctor has a much larger force of 500 British regulars and 2,800 native warriors under Tecumseh and Robert Dixon. The British begin with an artillery barrage, with Krogan having but one cannon, Old Betsy, with which to reply. With which to reply. But the Wikipedia article on the battle says that Krogan keeps changing Old Betsy's position so that Proctor will think he has more guns than he actually has. Still, running low on ammunition, Krogan orders his men to cease firing in order to conserve cannonballs. Cannonballs! Krogan determines that the British will assault the fort's northwest corner and so conceals old Betsy in a nearby blockhouse to await their arrival. And when they attack, old Betsy fires at them at point-blank range, inflicting such serious casualties on the British regulars that Proctor decides to call off the siege. Wikipedia lists the casualty figures as British-slash-Native warriors, 26 killed, 41 wounded, 29 missing in action, American, 1 killed, 7 wounded, Proctor's failure to take either Fort Meigs or Fort Stevenson drives a wedge between him and his native allies, especially Tecumseh, and will eventually end in a successful American invasion of Upper Canada in the fall. On August the 5th, the U.S. privateer Decatur, the largest American privateer, out of Charleston, South Carolina, and named in honor of Commodore Stephen Decatur, captures HMS Dominica off Bermuda. Both vessels were schooners. According to Wikipedia, the Dominica was better armed, but the Decatur was better manned, with the Americans boarding the British schooner after a long engagement. British losses were 18 killed, including the Dominica's captain, George Wilmot Barrett, with 70 captured, 40 of them wounded. American losses were 5 killed and 15 wounded. The captain of the Decatur was Dominique Durand. The Decatur itself will be captured by the Royal Navy in 1814. On August the 8th, two American schooners the USS Hamilton, named in honor of former Secretary of the Navy, Paul Hamilton, and the USS Scourge, both founder during a severe squall off 12 Mile Creek, near, strangely enough, Hamilton, Ontario. Over 80 seamen are lost, with only 16 survivors. In 1976, the sunken ships were declared a National Historic Site of Canada, with the city of Hamilton formally claiming the wrecks in 1979. The Wikipedia timeline for the War of 1812 says that on August 10th, the ships Julia and Pert were captured. Huh? 
What? Here's what really happened. Again, from Wikipedia. Quote, On the night of 7 to 8 August, Julia rescued a number of survivors of Scourge after that schooner had capsized and sunk in a heavy gale off Twelve Mile Creek. During the next three days, the American flotilla and the British squadron maneuvered, seeking to move into an advance, an at, an advantageous, an advantageous position for a general engagement. On 10th August, Julia and Growler were cut off from the flotilla after their commanders executed an incorrect turn and were captured. <laughs> Hamilton and Scourge will be recaptured in October near the beautifully named False Duck Islands in eastern Lake Ontario off Prince Edward County. Sticking at sea, on August the 12th, USS Argus, a veteran of the First Barbary War, is captured by HMS Pelican off St. David's Head in Wales. Wales, UK. Huh. Seems like the War of 1812 was, uh, was something of a world war. After an intense fight in which the American Commandant William Henry Allen lost a leg, the Argus surrendered and was taken to Plymouth, England, where Allen died of his wounds. The rest of the crew were held as POWs for the duration of the war. The website, 1812privateers.org, quoting William James, uh, no relation, William James's The Naval History of Great Britain from the Declaration of War by France in 1793 to the accession of George the Fourth, wow, now, now there's a title for you, provides the following casualty figures regarding the Pelican. Quote, Out of her 101 men, her second lieutenant among the absent, and 12 boys, the Pelican lost, besides the master's mate, William Young, slain in the moment of victory, one seaman killed, and five slightly wounded, chiefly by the American musketry and Langridge, Langridge, the latter to the torture of the wounded. End of quote. With regards to the Argus, quote, Out of her 122 men and three boys, to appearance a remarkably fine ship's company, the Argus had six seamen killed, her commander, two midshipmen, the carpenter, and three seamen mortally, her first lieutenant and five seamen severely, and eight others slightly wounded. Total, six killed and eighteen wounded. End of quote. Finally, August ends way down south with another chapter of the Creek War. The Creek War, the Fort Mims Massacre. Fort Mims was a stockade with a blockhouse located near Bay Minette, Alabama. On the 30th, the fort was overrun by 1,000 Red Stick warriors under the command of Peter McQueen and William Weatherford. Weatherford. The Red Sticks were Creek Indian traditionalists. Creek Indian traditionalists, opposed to American expansion into their territory, which is in modern-day Alabama, Georgia, and northern Florida. Some 265 American militia are killed or captured, with 252 civilians suffering a similar fate. The fort itself was severely damaged. This action is part of the Creek War, a related conflict to the War of 1812. So August sees the British retreating from Ohio, the massacre at Fort Mims in Alabama, 
and plenty of action on the Great Lakes and the high seas. With Henry Proctor in Tecumseh on retreat, will William Henry Harrison go on the offensive? Stay tuned. If this is your first visit to 1812 Channel, my name is Warren, and I'm your host. I'm not a historian, nor am I an expert on the War of 1812. Instead, I'm a student wishing to learn about the conflict. Each month for the roughly three years of the war, I will outline the major events. I will also attempt, attempt, attempt to review a book on the war. Did I miss anything today? Any errors? Then let me know in the comments below. And stay tuned for my upcoming video on the Battle of Beaver Dams. When the barrage lifts, cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, that's PX here, and they show a fort, some militia, cannons, and tall ships. While the music was Morning Song, Morning Song by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. I felt it was appropriate because the idea of cousin killing cousin, which is basically what happened during the War of 1812, sometimes makes me very sad. I also have to apologize for my vocals today. My throat is very scratchy. It must be all the smoke that we're experiencing out here in Western Canada at the moment. Although I'm sure some of you would tell me you don't sound any different than usual. <sighs> uh.